point that it... No, he had it in the first version. The labouring ships is, is richer, yeah. I'd say, even than scattered. Those scattered, scattered is, is good. Scattered it's good, is not but telling you bad. too much. Not at all bad. Labour, uh, labour. I mean, labour seems to me so richly suggestive of a, a concept for Yeats because it need not imply success. Does it remind me, remind me, does it come into among school children? Yes, labor, yes. Labor. It comes into right. the last stanza, doesn't it? Blossoming or dancing, yeah, where that's... the body is not bruised to pleasure so Labour is a blossoming or dancing. Yes. Where yes. the body is not bruised yes. to pleasure so A magnificent, a magnificent use of the, of the, of the word. Yes. Which is not which is not to be spoiled for us by our subsequent knowledge that it is a word he has fiddled with previously. Um, He's done, I think, more than fiddle with it, though, previously. Yeah, okay. I think it's been wonderfully used yes. by a younger man writing poems, which brings yes. me, this, this sounds hideously contrived, forgive me, which brings me to Adam's curse. But just one moment, what's, yeah. the, what's the date of among school children? <sighs> Among school, uh, someone will, will raise a paw and tell me. 35? 60 year old style public man. It would be, wouldn't yes, it? Yes, he's got quite to right. Be quite, uh, 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 has to be. Yeah. This is a, yeah. This is a poem. Yeah. One must be very careful about sending questions to among school children to an audience, I know, because there was a famous occasion in Sligo when a, a little old lady came to the front, I've been told, and said, I was one of the girls at the school when Senator Yates visited. And uh, that, that more or less trumped whatever anyone Absolutely. else had to say. Absolutely. Um, Wonderful. Uh, yes. And was, I'm sure, true. Yes, I'm sure it was. But, yeah. but labour, labouring. For Yates, labour and labouring are words that include both the, ma uh, the feminine and the masculine. Yep. Notions of yep. labour, yep. Um, and that would be true of among school children, but yep. it, it's true much, much earlier <coughs> yep. in in yep. Adam's Curse, um, which I'm going to try everyone's <coughs> patience, probably beyond breaking point, once again by reading, partly because it's a it is Geoffrey a poem uh, where I've often in reading it thought I'd like to hear your thoughts. Really. Well, it's, it's a poem until, which until now I've somehow overlooked, so well, anything that I say will be just a spontaneous response to, to a, what is in effect a first reading. I don't know, but I, I, I don't, know this, don't know this poem. This is a poem that is first published. I may have lectured on it, but I don't <laughs> know. <laughs> it's first published <coughs> ten, ten years odd, give mm. or take a while. Uh, after the, the, the sorrow of love. Mm. And the key elements are here. There is a moon image, which is similarly important. Mm -hmm. And there is love. There is indeed a kind of question of what eros might be in poetic labour mm -hmm. and the notion of men's and women's work. Uh, I, I, I've printed it out here in a... a in a rather strangely punctuated form, you will notice, uh, uh, from the monthly, its first publication, uh, at the end of 1902. Uh, and there are some verbal changes, too, which you'll, those of you who know Yeats might, might uh, note here. Um, he smoothed it out a little later. Adam's curse. We sat together at one summer's end, that beautiful mild woman, your close friend, and you and I, and talked of poetry. I said a line will take us hours, maybe, yet if it does not seem a moment's thought, our stitching and unstitching has been naught. Better go down upon your marrow bones and scrub a kitchen pavement or break stones like an old pauper in all kinds of weather. For to articulate sweet sounds together is to work harder than all these, and yet be thought an idler, 
by the noisy set of bankers, schoolmasters and clergymen the martyrs call the world. That woman then murmured with her young voice, for whose mild sake there's many a one shall find out all heartache in finding that it's young and mild and low. There is one thing that all we women know, although we never heard of it at school, that we must labor to be beautiful. I said, it's certain there is no fine thing since Adam's fall, but needs much laboring. There have been lovers who thought love should be so much compounded of high courtesy that they would sigh and quote with learned looks precedents out of beautiful old books. Yet now it seems an idle trade enough. We sat grown quiet at the name of love. We saw the last embers of daylight die and in the trembling blue-green of the sky a moon moon worn as if it had been a shell washed by time's waters as they rose and fell about the stars and broke in days and years i had a thought for no one but your ears that you were beautiful and that i strove to love you in the old high way of love that it had all seemed happy and yet we'd grown as weary hearted as that hollow moon will it do utterly utterly dreary rhymes appallingly dreary um The laboring here mm. to me is somehow symptomatic of his laboring rhyme. Mm. Um, it it is, I'm afraid, a most appallingly tedious poem. Really? Yes. I want to know more. I want. I mean, uh, marrow bones, stones. Oh, the, 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 yes. I mean, you can you can see how mm. later on um, Parnell came down the road. He mm -hmm. said to a cheering man, "Ireland shall gain her freedom, and you, you still break yes. stone." Mm. Uh, I mean, the late the late Yeats is very effectively always going down his marrow bones and mm. and uh, mm. uh, you know writing about stones. Uh, yes, sure. The, the, mm. the, the, there are. There are, there is an embryonic, effective rhetoric here to be mm. 